for at forstå, hvorfor Apache får så stor en position inden for hiphop, skal vi først tilbage til Bahamas i 60'erne. Dengang er manden, der spiller de legendariske bongotrummer, endnu bare en ung mand, der prøver at slå sit navn fast. My big break in music came uh, from the movie Thunderball. The producer of the film, Kevin McClory, lived in Nassau, and he would come to this club all the time to see me play. And one night he brought his cast of characters down to the club to watch me play. And Sean Connery said, that's the guy we want. Why don't you come with us quietly? You don't seem to understand. You see, I enjoy my dancing. Efter at have været med i Thunderball, drager King til Hollywood for at prøve lykken som skuespiller, men det er ikke nemt. Som percussionist går det meget bedre. Han bliver en stærkt efterspurgt studiemusiker i Los Angeles, og ikke mindst bliver han huspercussionist hos Motown Records, og hans bongoer kan høres på en lang række klassikere. I was Mr. L.A. Mm. when it came to percussion and, and recording sessions. Mm. I did all of them. I could say the only person, only two people in the music business I have not worked for, that was Elvis Presley and Frank Sinatra. And Frank and I were friends, but there was always, you know, he didn't use that much percussion, like especially my type of stuff. Mm. You know, and Elvis is too racist to use me in his session. But I worked for everybody other than those two guys. Yeah. Everybody. I 1971 er filmen The Thing with Two Heads i produktion. Just remember, complete secrecy. Det er en let actionkomedie om en racistisk læge, der ved noget af et uheld for sit hoved opereret fast på kroppen af en sort mand. Musikproducenten Michael Weiner, som her ses i en lille statistrolle, synes filmen mangler god biljagtmusik og samler et band af Los Angeles' bedste studiemusikere for at indspille to sange til soundtracket. Bandet kalder han The Incredible Bongo Band, og King Erison er naturligvis bag bongotrummerne. Filmen bliver en fiasko, men singlen Bongo Rock bliver et hit. Weiner beslutter sig for at indspille en hel LP med orkestret, og en af melodierne er Apache. Da vi besøger King i Las Vegas, viser det sig, at han ikke har hørt indspilningen siden den udkom. I never paid much attention to that stuff after I'm finished recording. I'm finished. <laughs> Once I get through listening and I'm pleased with what I did, I hardly ever get back to that record again. I'm on to writing something different. This is Apache now. Got all about this stuff. <laughs> the cowboy riding in the town. This is this big western piece. Yeah, yeah. When I did the session, you know, I I I was playing and laughing. I was really having a ball laughing to myself. What in the hell am I playing to? You know, because I'm used to this thing in a cowboy movie and watching the, the star ride through the city on the on his horseback, and now I'm recording it. So I was having a good chuckle to myself, you know. But I'm gonna go back and listen to that some more now, because I had no idea how beautiful it is. It's a beautiful piece. Til trods for Apache-versionen ignorerer pladekøberne albummet, som udkommer i 1973. Men nogle måneder senere bliver pladen en vigtig del af den spirende hiphopkultur i Bronx i New York. Meget takket være den jamaikanske immigrant Cool Herc, bedre kendt som hiphopens gudfar. Tidligt i 70'erne tager han DJ-kulturen med fra Jamaica og arrangerer fester i Bronx, hvor han spiller rytmestærk funk og soul, og blandt favoritterne er Apache. Blandt Cool Herc's disciple er en ung mand, som senere skal blive kendt som Grandmaster Cass. 
Kass er ukendt for de fleste, men blandt hiphopkendere er han en legende. Han har været med fra starten og dækket alle fire elementer i hiphop, graffiti, breaking, DJing og rap. Kan du remember the first time you heard about Pache? I can't really say that I can remember the first time, but it would have to be at a Cool Hurt party. I was like 12, 13 years old, man. I was in junior high school, right before I was going into high school. Um, I was a b-boy, a graffiti, graffiti artist and a b-boy. And then uh, we used to have these little house parties where all the dancers would get together and then we would try to find the records that like the DJs played at their parties and and play those at the house party. I would have one little turntable, my man have another one and we would just play like that until we I saw Herc with the professional sound system and turntables and I'm booming and that's what made me want to DJ in the first place. That's what you know made me step up to the next level of hip hop and become a DJ, man. And if you didn't have Apache, then you people had went to another party, man. <laughs> you had to have Apache. You waited for that throughout the party. You waited for that record to come on, and that you know symbolized that the party was at its peak and ready to blow. It was the drums. It was the drums. Um, the break in every song is like you know when all the music cuts out, and then just the, just the drums are playing. And this was a classic drum break. It has breaks in in spots, in different spots. The 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 first the intro break. And then it has the um I say like the lead in with the, the down, 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 down. you know that that's when the B-boys start getting ready. That's when they start, you know what I mean, walking around and getting antsy and amped up. And then, you know what I mean? The dun, 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 dun. That means the beat is here. The crowd would go crazy as soon as the beat came on. You know, and that was the one of the first records scratched. You know what I mean? Like cut back and forth to keep the beat going. Det man gjorde i starten for at forlænge, at du spillede selv med rytmen. Og så når du kom til det sted, som de gerne ville danse til, som... Så forlængede du den bare ved at køre pladen tilbage. Og spille det samme stykke om og om igen. Og så er der jo flere timers dansevenlig musik <laughs> til, til, til publikum. Og så kan du så bare lade den køre videre ind til musikken så starter. Et af de steder, som der blev mest brugt, det er efter at breakdown kom, så startede det her stykke. Og så var det ligesom b-boysene, de synes, at der skulle... Der var lagt op til fest, ikke? Og det var faktisk det stykke, som der blev forlænget mest. Og så senere hen i DJ-konkurrencer, der var den også oplagt at bruge, fordi der ligger en... En stor trum, og en stor trum, og så en lille trum, så du vil bruge den. Så er den meget, meget nem at have med at gøre, fordi der ligger rigtig, rigtig stærke rytmer nede. Parallelt med DJ-kulturen vokser rappen frem. Fra at være lidt småsnak i mikrofonen mellem numrene, bliver rap en stadig større attraktion i sig selv. Og Apache-rytmerne er perfekte til at rappe over. Hell yeah! Who, who haven't rapped over Apache, yo? That's, that's what we were doing, Ikey and Mikey, man. It was like a little tune we used to do to Apache when, when Apache used to come on. Ikey and Mikey was playing in the ditch. Then I geek over word up, man. En af de første grupper, der brugt øh, nummer, eller rettere sagt, lavede en remake af det, en rap remake af det, det var Sugar Hill Gang øh, på deres LP, Eighth Wonder, hvor de, øh, hvor de faktisk nærmest genindspillede det. Altså, breaket lyder som sagt sådan her. Og deres version lød sådan her. 